Good morning, kids. I'm Jenna. I'm Kyla. And we are both so excited that you've joined us for another jam-packed episode of SCF Kids Online. If you remember from last week, if you were tuned in, we talked a lot about the good and the bad kings of the southern kingdom of Judah. And if you remember correctly, there was a lot of bad kings, but we focused on two of the good kings, Hezekiah and Josiah. And they helped lead the people back to God and worshiping the one true God. It made me so excited that they were finally back to worshiping God. <sighs> it's wonderful. Um, Jenna? Yeah? Unfortunately, things take a turn for the worse in our story today. Oh, man. I knew that was gonna happen. Ah, well, we better get started and see what happened in our story today. Slash kids. 
No. No. I don't, I don't think that's what it is. I have a f deep feeling, deep, deep, deep down in my belly, that this definitely has something to do with our story today. Hmm. Well, you know what I always say, trailblazer Trudy. Always trust the deep parts of your belly. Yep. Let's open it up. Whoa. What is in there? I love good mystery. J. I know what that stands for. Jungle Swinging Julie. It stands for me and my name. Okay, you know what? Not everything is about you. And I think it stands for the man in our story. Oh, you might be right. Hmm. Well, what else is in there? Well, there's also a man with the word profit written across him. Hmm. This is, this is starting to come together. Um, what else is in there? Well, there is also the Castle of Judah. So, hmm. Let me take a closer look. Yep, that's the southern kingdom of Judah, all right. Oh, wait, wait. There's one more thing. You see something I don't see? It's a baby. A baby? Okay, so I, I thought you were onto something here. We had the J, so a prophet whose name starts with the letter J to the southern kingdom of Judah. Yeah. That all makes sense. That's, it's gotta be Jeremiah. But the what, baby? what does the baby have to do with anything? Hmm. I feel like we're going to need to watch the Bible video to figure out what that's all about. So, yeah, let's go check it out. When Josiah was the king of Judah, God called a priest named Jeremiah to be a prophet. God told Jeremiah, I knew you before I made you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I chose you to do very special things. I chose you to be a prophet to the nations. Oh no, God, Jeremiah said. I don't know how to speak in front of other people. I am just a boy, only a youth. Don't say that, God replied. You will go where I send you and say what I tell you to say. I am with you. I will protect you. For many years, Jeremiah spoke God's message to the people of Judah. He reminded them that God had made a covenant with them. If they obeyed him, he would bless them. But the people did not obey. Now God had to punish their sin. God said the people would lose their land, their wealth, and their freedom. Jeremiah explained that people's hearts fool them into thinking they are better than they actually are. They trick people into wanting things or doing things that God does not want for them. The people did not want to listen to Jeremiah and Jeremiah was sad. He warned them that God's punishment was coming, but he also said that God had a plan to change his people's hearts. God promised a new and better covenant so the people could be saved from their sins. God would write his law on people's hearts. He would give his people power to obey his commands. God said, I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sin. God told Jeremiah to write God's message on a scroll. So Jeremiah spoke God's words and his friend Baruch wrote the words on a scroll. Baruch read from the scroll so that all the people heard God's words. He warned that the king of Babylon would come and destroy Judah. King Jehoiakim sent one of his officials to get the scroll. As the official read the scroll, King Jehoiakim cut off each part of the scroll and threw it into the fire. He did this until the entire scroll was burned up. So God told Jeremiah to write another scroll with the same words as the first scroll. Jeremiah told the king, God is going to punish you, your family, and your leaders for doing wrong things. God warned you this disaster will come to Judah. You did not listen. 
Jeremiah told about a day when God would forgive sin and change people's hearts. Jesus made these words come true. God forgives our sin through His Son, Jesus. He changes us and gives us power through His Spirit to obey His commands. So that's what the baby in the treasure chest was all about. God had called Jeremiah to be a prophet way before he was even a baby in his mother's womb. Like, crazy. But speaking of the word prophet, it's kind of a big word. I Do you know what it means? Uh, no, it's a big word. It's got seven letters in it. That's true. Seven letters is a long word. Yeah. I have a friend. Her name is Miss Dictionary. I'm sure she can help us out with what a prophet is, because, well, we have no idea. So let's pass it off to her. Well, hello there. Miss Dictionary here. And you can always count on me when you need the definition of a big word. And today's big word is prophet. Simply put, a prophet is someone who listens to what God says and then takes that message to God's people. So friends, that is your word of the day from Miss Dictionary and I hope to see you again soon. Wow, wasn't she so helpful, Kyla? Yes. I feel like we're going to need to see her again sometime. Mm-hmm. So, Jeremiah was called by God to tell the people of Judah about him, to tell them that there was going to be a new way for their sins to be forgiven. It was going to be a pretty good way. I mean, Jesus was going to come and he was going to change their hearts. And he was going to have the Holy Spirit that was going to help us obey him, to obey God and to love him. I mean, Jeremiah had to show a lot of love to King Jehoiakim when he burnt the entire scroll that he had written God's words on into the fire. So how do you show love to somebody when they're mean to you? Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Joshua from Seaford, Delaware asks, There's a kid in my school who isn't very nice to me or my friends. It makes me angry. How should I treat someone who is mean to me? Joshua, that's a great question. And, and let me just say up front, if somebody's being unkind to you or mean to you in a way that's bullying you, go talk to an adult. Uh, that is something that we need to take seriously and you need to go get help with an adult. Uh, but if it's somebody who's just maybe saying some mean things every once in a while or just not inviting you to, to do things with the other friends and so forth, it's understandable that you would get upset about that. It's understandable when somebody wrongs us that our hearts wanna take us down this path of being angry. The problem is that if we let our hearts continue taking us down that path, we reach the point of acting out wrongly in our anger. And what can happen a lot of times is that when somebody sins against us, our anger drives us to sin against them. We wanna get even. And really at the heart of this is selfishness and pride. That we think, how in the world could they do that to us? Don't they understand who I am? I don't deserve this. And it's really pride speaking. It's selfishness speaking. And this goes against what the gospel is about. The gospel is about us understanding that we don't deserve anything, that all that God gives us is an act of kindness to us, and we need to live humbly before Him and before others. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go to war against that anger that starts to kind of drive up in our hearts and our minds, and we wanna take that anger to God and pray about that and say, God, help us with this anger and let kindness replace anger. Because here's the thing, Jesus lived on earth and he was treated unkindly by others, wasn't he? I mean, to the point of he was put to death on the cross. And yet we don't see Jesus acting out wrongly in his anger. We see Jesus acting out kindly through the trials, the ordeals that he experienced. And he did that for us. So we need to live likewise, we need to live kindly toward others, even when they're mean to us, not giving into anger, but pursuing kindness because God has given us kindness in Christ Jesus. Have you ever been surprised by someone else's kindness toward you?
so today's memory verse game is going to involve the game catchphrase. So basically, we're going to describe what's on the screen to the other person. We're going to try and guess back and forth. Whoever has the most points at the end of the round gets to choose how the other person says the verse. So you guys need to pick a team. Are you team Jenna or are you team Kyla? Because you're going to read the verse with whoever. So, and you're also going to try and guess what we're describing from home and see if you can get it before we do because this is a really tricky game. All right, so should I start? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, uh, no, I can't do that one. No, no. Okay, so you have a pan that you cook something pan. in. Uh, what's another word for cooking? Yes, Baking. that is one of them. Um, no, you're not gonna get that one. Oh, don't know what that is. No. Okay, um, so this is something that you drink that's white. Milk. Oh, I used the word drink. Can't do that. Okay, so this is what we were talking about before. There's bread that you make a something with. Oh, sandwich. No. Yes. Uh, it's a kind of meat that you can put Ham. on. Yes. Put it together. Ham sandwich. Yes. Okay. Yay. Uh, you're two, two. Okay. Okay. Hit next. Okay, so you usually have this at your bedside table at night or it uh, is... Water? Yes. Okay, um, you sprinkle it on your pasta. Oh. Salt? No. Parmesan and cheese. Oh, Parmesan cheese, of course. <laughs> All right, well, that was a tie, so we should just decide how we're going to read the verse together. Okay. Uh, how about we read it really slow together, as okay. slow as we can, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. If my people who bear my name humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Should I start? Yes. Uh, Parmesan cheese. I totally could have got that. Oh, start. Okay, so uh, this is something that's super delicious. It's in the sh shape of kind of like a half moon. It's made of bread, very like soft. The okay. French. The French would. Oh be oh oh um uh, croissant. Yes. Uh, okay, so if you're sitting at the table and you're eating something and you want something that's on the other side, you ask them to... Please pass the salt. Uh, not salt. Pepper. Something that you put on bread. Butter. Yes, so... Please pass the butter. Yeah. Is that two? Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, so this is something that's really sugary. It's delicious. Why am I still doing this? Okay. This is... I'm supposed to pass oh. it to you. Anyways, continue. Give the next. Okay, you put this on pancakes. Sir. What's our Canadian flag? Uh, Canadian maple syrup. Yes. Oh, it's not a cake, but... <laughs> oh, okay. Kyla, we, we forgot to pass it back and forth after yeah. we each got one anyways. It's so cool. Kyla technically got more than me, but anyway. So how, how should I read the verse, Kyla? I think you should read it with your tongue out. Oh, okay. If you're on Team Gemma... You gotta read it with me with your tongue out. One, two, three. If my people who bear my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I will heal from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Okay, so this time we're gonna actually pass it back and forth. Yeah. You start with it this time. Okay. Um, and then this is our last and final round, okay? So oh my goodness. I gotta get Kyle on this one. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay, there are little sweet candies that when you go to like an arena or something, sometimes they have them in the big containers, you can twist them, they all fall out in a big bump. Rockets? Nope. No. Um, they are all Jumbles. different colors and they're squishy when you eat them. Jumbles? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Uh, okay, so you, the English would drink this in a cup. Tea. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's a... Cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Um, 
Oh, you put it in the microwave and it makes a bunch Popcorn. of... Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so you put this in your mouth and it makes your something smell good. Um, mint gum. Yes, but what is it that smells good? That your breath. Oh, how many? I don't even... I wasn't keeping track. You had two. I, I had two and you had one? I think so. Yeah. So, uh, anyways. I won that time, guys. So I think for the final round, Team Kyla is going to... Uh -oh. Say it in an opera voice. How do you even do that? <laughs> I am my people who bear my name. Okay. You know, like that. Ready. Are you guys ready? Okay. Three, two, one. If people who bear my name humble themselves, pray, and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from the heavens and forgive their sins and heal their land, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Ah, uh, Team Kylo, that was fair. That was not nice Perfect. of me, was it? I'm sorry. Oh, it was uh, you did a fine job. All right, that is our memory verse game for today. I hope you had fun practicing that, and hopefully you caught some of those before we did. But uh, go ahead, grab your Bibles, and we'll be right back in just a second. Got your Bibles, hold them up, and open them to Ezekiel chapter 36, and we're going to read verses 26 and 27. So I'll give you a few seconds. You can pause the video if you need a little extra time. And then in just a second, Kyla's going to read it for us. All right, so hopefully all of you have your books open and ready. And I can read it for you. So it says, I will give you a new heart and a new mind. I will take away your stubborn heart of stone and give you an obedient heart. Thanks, Kyla. So a lot of great words in that verse that help remind us of our story today. So God had told Jeremiah to talk to the people about a new covenant that was coming. A covenant where God was going to change the people's hearts, where God changes our hearts. So before people's hearts were cold and hard, but with the new covenant, God softens our hearts and makes them open to him. And so I want to take some time now to open our hearts, let God soften our hearts so that we can worship him and thank him for this new covenant that God has given us. Would you worship with me? Got a rhythm in my heart and in my soul. Reason for this joy I can't control. I want to sing, I want to dance, and give everyone a chance to hear about this in this life I know. What you give to me is not for me to keep, it's for the world to see your love. Give a little 
to the vast unknown everywhere we go god is good through the trials we face he will show the way we will stand and say and god is good oh, oh, oh. what we face, no matter how hard life gets, God is still good. And if I'm completely honest, I've had a really tough week. There's been some heartbreak and things that have been really hard for me and our family. Um, so I definitely needed that reminder today. So Kyla, is there a time that you can remember in your life where you were like, God is good in this situation? Yes. Yeah, so all the time at school, when it gets stressful or really hard, or you maybe even have a test, I pray to God and just try to remember that He's always there and is always going to make sure that everything goes good and that there's always good to come out of the bad. So hopefully you can all do that too. Thanks for sharing, Kyla. I mean, there's always, uh, there always seems to be tough things that come in our life and it can be hard to remember that God is good when you're going through something really tough. But I was reminded of that this week. And when I stopped and prayed, um, I even prayed with my daughter while driving to the park in the car. And God really helped to remind me that he's good. And I, that song just helped bring that all back for me today. So let's close our morning with a word of prayer. And then we'll see you guys next week. All right. Lord, you are good and you have given good plans for us. Thank you for your word. Help us remember that you do not accept us because we follow your rules, but you accept us because we trust in Jesus, who obeyed perfectly and died on the cross for our sins. Change our hearts and give us power through your spirit to love and obey you. Amen.